Kamish, the CEO of Cole Creative. And today I'm here with Denny Corby, comedy magician. Hi, Denny. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, of course. I love that we're able to still stay connected uh, even during these times this way. Um, so before I ask you any kind of questions, I just want, can you let everybody know who you are, what you do? Yeah, so I'm Denny Corby and i from Northeast PA, but I travel the world doing an interactive Oh, let's see. Oh, sorry. You just froze. I'm so oh, no. sorry. Yeah, no, that's like good. never. Did it freeze it's on your end my, or like, now? It's okay. probably my end. Um, that's probably okay. my end. Well, let's start again. Fortunately, it was right. the beginning, so we'll just get, we'll, we'll start again. Ready? Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Hopple Cabbage, and I'm the CEO of Cole Creative, and today I am speaking with Denny Corby, a comedy magician. Hi, Denny. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, I appreciate this. Yeah, of course. Well, before we get started, can you just let people know who you are and a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, so my name is Denny Corby. I travel the world doing an interactive comedy magic show, but am based out of Northeast PA. <laughs> That's wonderful, I love it. And I know you have a little bit of a backstory. Um, your family business is in, a, it's a paper company and you were supposed to take that yeah. over, right? If you don't have to go into too much detail, I just think it's fun. Um, I've seen your show a handful of times in person and virtually, you know, with the crisis going on and you do a killer job every time. So thanks for bringing your own personal magic to the world. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Um, so all through April of 2020 and, you know, being locked in lockdown, Co-Creative had released this 30-day um, video series and it got me chatting with some people. And to kind of transition here and keep some of the conversations going, I, I just thought about what's a question I could ask everyone. and the whole idea and our brand came to mind. And I just want to really want to know what's fueling you. I know it's a little open-ended, but how, whatever yeah. comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll kind of touch on what you talked about in the beginning, like a, little, like a little bit of my backstory, because it kind of brings me to where I'm at today. Awesome. So, um, so I, like I said, I, I'm from the area, uh, specifically Scranton. Now I live in Clark Summit. But um, my family actually owns the paper supply company in Scranton. So essentially the real life Dunder Mifflin. Yep. Uh, so if people watch The Office, the opening credits, the big brick tower, that's our building. Um, so for years, ever since I was younger, I thought I was going to work for like, the family business. Um, my dad's also a very big uh, serial entrepreneur, has a couple different companies, you know, a couple hundred employees. And, um, you know, I thought I was going to run the family business. So got up, you know, from 16 to 24, 25, I did almost every aspect of most, like multiple different companies, stripping and waxing floors, cleaning bathrooms, working in the warehouse, like you name it, pretty much you done. did it all. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So, uh, but always still like doing magic and like loving magic in the entertainment world. So when I was about around like a family, like family vacation, it was towards the end of the year. And they were like, listen, uh, we know you don't love doing this. Uh, we know you kind of love magic. Why don't you quit working for us? Go and try the magic full time. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be 30, 40, 50, looking back on life going, what if? Um, so they, they gave me like a really big push. Um, Cause I don't know if I would have jumped on my own if they didn't kind of like give me that like nudge into the water. That's so, um, you know, fast forward to what fuels me. Um, you know, uh, I worked very hard. I've been doing this full time about five, six years. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I just uh, was like, oh, I'll get up a website. People will book me. And uh, blew through a lot of savings and money that first year, like just sitting around tooling my thumbs, like where are all these people coming at? Uh, so then I realized very quickly, I have to hustle and hustle hard. And no matter how big you get, you always have to have some sort of effort and you know, business minded stuff moving forward to keep the ball rolling. Uh, so once I really started to own what I was doing, uh, the ball started to roll. It wasn't always quick, but like it slowly started like getting momentum. The first year and a half, two years, three years, a little bit slower. Um, the last three years really blew up, you know, or I shouldn't say blew up, but like, that's when like momentum really started to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like the snowball effect. Um, and then last year I was on a couple of different TV, uh, TV shows all over the country and one being on the season finale of Penn and Teller Fool Us. Uh, so this year was looking to pretty much triple what I did last year. And then all that came to a halt. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, like everything. Um, I was supposed to be in Hawaii for like almost three weeks doing three different shows, like March 31st to April 19th. That all fell through. And I was just like, you gotta, like, so I was, uh, not, not many people know, but I guess they, they will now. Uh, I was in like a really dark place for about two weeks. Uh, just when I was went down, cause I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Um, so, you know, I kinda, uh, I, it's the wrong phrase, but I just like manned up. I put on my like big boy pants. And I was just like, no, I'm not going to go down without like a fight. So um, I turned to virtual shows. I was like, you know, why am I going to sit here and sulk when I don't have any shows? I could have shows. 
Uh, I think I have a decent personality. Uh, and I think I do a pretty good show as well. So I was like, I'll just do virtual shows. Uh, so I sent out an email to my database to all my clients and it blew up. Um, I've done over 60 virtual shows so far. Wow. Um, have about another 30, 40 more on my books with about two to 20 booking every single week. Um, so that's what, you know, I think, so what really fueled me was I think just owning what I do and just not going down without a fight. Um, that's one thing like, you know, I might, I don't know if I can curse. Uh, I might, I might complain. I might like, you know, I, I might just really hate things, but I'm not, I'm not going to, if, if, if I'm going to go down and things are going to go wrong, it's going to be because of me. I'm not going to blame something that's happening. You know, I'm not going to blame an external force. Uh, so like if, if I was going to go down and uh, I couldn't do shows anymore and all that stuff, I, it was going to be because, you know, I gave it my hundred percent and then it just like didn't work. Um, so, you know, it's kind of made a little pivot. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of what, what, what's fueling me. And honestly, uh, that's what, that's what gives me my energy is yeah. like doing, like I, making people laugh and smile is really what it's about for, for my shows. Yeah. It's a, it's a magic show, but really the joy and laughter I bring to people like really just like, like hits home. So the fact yeah. I can do that now and I'm kind of getting my fix also, I'm doing anywhere from like five to seven shows, like a night Thursday through Saturdays. So like, it's nice to get that like boost. I can like, you know, do my shows, make people feel good and then kind of go home and, you know, kind of sulk like all of us are because it's still like a really strange time but <laughs> yeah no I was gonna say I feel like your story obviously unique to you but similar to so many others in so many ways just the, the whole process of hearing what's happening kind of shutting down going to that dark place still kind of being in that dark place but now finding ways to stay you know out of it as, as often as possible um that 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 I hear creativity innovation you know getting online as quickly as possible um and also what I hear is just reaching out to people that you're already connected to. It wasn't like, because this is all oh. new and this world's so new, let me start from scratch. It was who's here, who exists, who can maybe come out and support me in some way, shape or form. So that's oh, really- Oh, 1,000%, 1,000%. Yeah. Um, it's, if it's one thing I've learned just through like my family, just business in general, that relationships are everything. Um, yeah. Like I'm super fortunate that I've had clients turn friends and I've had clients turn friends turn practically family. Um, so just having that ability, uh, definitely helped, you know, reaching into my like power network of people. Um, you know, when this first came out, I had to do just a couple like free, really cheap shows or super cheap or just free just to kind of get the ball rolling too. Definitely. Uh, and plus it was a nice value add too, that now some clients who were amazing clients of mine and we couldn't do our shows, you know, I didn't charge like, Hey, you know, let's just do this like fun show. Like let's, let's rally the troops. Let's, you know, boost uh, morale. Let's have this fun stuff. Let's, you know, do like a fun show during one of your, like your Zoom meetings for your company and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so it's been, uh, you know, uh, limitations force creativity as they, as they say. So this is definitely, uh, you know, I think it's, it's hurt a lot of people, unfortunately. Uh, it's in a weird way helped a lot of people. Um, I think it's, you know, created a whole different opportunity. You know, there's a lot of people who are getting really creative and, um, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of loss from this, but I think also a lot of opportunity, a lot of uh, upside as, as well as much as I hate to say that, but. No, yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think anybody tuning in, um, this, this was more than beneficial. And, and I appreciate you you sharing just your journey and what you did, you know, being faced with just so much uncertainty like the rest of us. And, and I hope it inspires a person or two along the way. So thank you so much.